Hey Math 43, I had a question coming out of chapter seven and I'm gonna do 81 and 82 in combo because they're, they're the same setup. So we're told that the time to wait for a particular bus is distributed uniformly from zero to 75 minutes. So I hear just in that sentence that my variable is this wait time and the units because it's a continuous numerical variable are hours. And then I get that the least amount of wait time is zero, the most is 75, and I had this uniform distribution. So we did uniform distributions back in chapter five. Great. The next sentence says that I took a sample of 100 riders randomly to learn how long they've waited. So I hear that I took a sample right, of 100. So as soon as I hear a sample, I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm going to be working with a sampling distribution. All right. And because I have a continuous numerical variable, I'm going to be looking at the x bar distribution. All right. If I had a categorical variable, I'd be looking at a p prime distribution. All right. So we know some rules about the sampling distribution, right? That we have the n, the mu, the sigma over square root n, right? So if we remember from all of our stuff in chapter seven, we keep the mean of the population distribution, but we take the standard deviation of the population distribution and divide it by the square root of n. And then we have to take a moment and assess if I can put a capital N here, right? We've got either the population distribution was stated as normal, or the sample size is 30 or higher, right? And the central limit theorem kicks in. So let's let's move with this. And I wanna show you how did I get from the 0, 075 to these numbers here. All right, so how I did this was I, I wanted to find the mean. Oops, let me use a different color. I need to find, I'll refresh here. I need to find the mean of the population and the standard deviation of the population. And keep in mind, this thing right here, population distribution. And when I say distribution, it means I could have made a graph, right? So I could have made a rectangle, gone from 0 to 75. This would have been 1 over 75, right? Probability. We've got x. We've got wait times. And the units are hours. There's my distribution. But what was the mean? Well, if you go back to Chapter 5, we have a formula for the mean. It's min plus max over 2. So in this case, that mean would have been 37.5 minutes. All right. And then we had a formula for the standard deviation, square root of b minus a squared over 12, and there's the standard deviation of 21.65. So if I know that the mean, and I'll put this here, the mean now is 37.5, and the standard deviation is 21.651, and we know our n is 100, I can, oops, excuse me, I can go ahead and I can put all of those numbers in here, right? So you see the mean? You see the standard deviation dividing by the square root of 100 to get the standard error, and it's that number. Now, I'm going to erase some of the stuff I have because what I really want to focus on is why can I put the capital N there. All right, so let me clear all this out and just remind us that, again, this is the population distribution, and we are building to a sampling distribution. All right. So as I look at this, now why was I able to put the capital N here? There are two ways to get normality in mean land, and it's either that the population distribution was stated as normal or the sample size is 30 or higher. And I want to be clear that the population distribution was not stated to be normal. But the big thing is that the sample size was 30 or higher, so the central limit theorem kicked in, and I can put that N there. And what that N allows me to do is now I can calculate probabilities and percentiles using, I can now use normal CDF and inverse norm. So that's what that capital N gets me. All right, if I was talking about the population distribution, I'd have to use a bunch of base times height, which is fine, I can do that, but, but in, in the um, sampling distribution, we'd be using normal CDF and inverse norm. So let me just put here, if we were asked about the population distribution, we'll be using base times height. All right, so 81 says, what is the 90th percentile for the average wait time? And I want you to hear that in 81, it asked about the average, oops, excuse me, let me get this, average wait time. So the big clue that we need to get from there is that it used the word average. And because it said average, we are on the X bar distribution. It's talking about the sample. If it just asked the 90th percentile for wait times, we would be on the population distribution. But we are specifically on the sampling distribution, and that's why you see me using inverse norm. So again, if it had asked for the 
let me do this. If it had asked for the per, uh, 90th percentile of just wait times, that's when I would have done base times height is equal to 0.90 because that's the uniform stuff. Now I'm going to erase it because we weren't asked that. So I go ahead and I crunch that number on my calculator. I get that the 90th percentile is about 40.275 minutes. All right, and you see me actually making that graph, right? So for this, right, this is again sampling distribution. All right, there's my graph. Here is this was the population distribution over here. And you can see I just I have two different graphs, right? I have the rectangle here and I have the bell curve here, but 37.5 is below the peak. And I scale that out with about 0.2, what was the standard deviation or standard error? 2.1651 minutes. But anyways, 40.275 is about there. And just take note, right? On my graph, I have average and I have X bars. Okay. All right, 82. It says, would you be surprised, based on some sort of numerical calculation, if the sample average wait time for the 100 riders is less than 100, uh, excuse me, less than 30 minutes? And I want you to hear that, again, it said average wait time. That is a huge clue. It didn't just say wait time. It said average. So because it says average, we're going to be back here on the sampling distribution, right? If it had just said wait times, then we would have been over here on the population distribution. So once you set up your population and your sampling distributions, you have to then discern, well, which, which distribution is the question asking me about? And in this case, because we saw the word average in both of these setups, I'm on the sampling distribution. So I went and I looked for, hey, what's the likelihood that the average wait time is less than 30? Now take note, I have an X bar here in my probability statement. If you wrote this, X is less than 30, all right, that would be off of the population distribution and that's when you should be using base times height. But if you're on the sampling distribution, which we are, it's talking about the 100 folks that are in our sample, our 100 writers, we're on the normal distribution. So you see me going low, high, mean, standard error, and that's pretty low. So yeah, I would be surprised. When we get into chapter eight, we're gonna talk about how, um, what we consider rare in stats and anything less than 5%, oops, why is my pen not working? There we go. Anything less than five is considered rare. All right, and that's just a cutoff we have. And you can raise or lower that threshold, but that's pretty much the industry standard. So basically that probability is zero. So we're saying, yeah, that's pretty rare. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.